I mean, that's really a big deal. And by the way, uh, if you want to, I'm not trying to make money off this book, I'm trying to educate <laughs> Canadians. But you can go down and buy it in chapters. You'll, you'll, get, you'll be shocked at what you read. The other thing is I do believe in civil disobedience. So I will tell you right now, I'll wait till the weather clears up a little bit. It's a little warmer. But there are several of us that have already vowed we're going to go down and chain ourselves to Parliament if Heather doesn't get citizenship soon. So I'll put the word out. You can see it. Because I, have, I would love all of you to march because in the last month, whenever there's been a problem with Mr. McCallum and people surround him, immediately within 24 hours he fixes the problem. So that tells you your voice counts. So if we all went down to Mr. McCallum's office, surrounded him and said, we have three or four people here, I'll bet you we'd get him in within 24 hours. And, it, and you know what? The more diversity I have in my life, the better my life is. It's like going to the buffet and only eating roast beef. It's much more fun to get a variety of everything. And the second thing is, the more you go out and help other people, the more fun your life is. It's not about money, it's about what can I do for others. It's a great feeling, so we'll let you know. Heather, you have a lot of people standing behind you right now. Yeah, I just want to mention that uh, about the comment that Jacob made. We know that through the Indian Act, the colonial government of Canada has carried out a series of policies to either assimilate, convert the Indian into Canadians, or just get rid of them. It is calculated that there were between 15 to 19 million indigenous peoples on Turtle Island before the Europeans came. And the rate of genocide that occurred 100 years after 1492 was 97.5 percent. That is 18, 18 million and a half ancestors were wiped out of the land. Uh, for the second question, in, in, in the Amazon, in Africa, in Asia, in many other parts of the world, we are indigenous peoples and a set of anthropologists we are trying really hard that statelessness be respected as a choice. But the state comes in and forces the states, their states, into people. For instance, the uncontacted tribes of the Amazon, they don't want to belong to any state, and that's their choice. They have been fleeing civilization from the times of the Inca Confederacy. This is like uh, more than 500 years ago. And they are still fleeing this, uh, you know, uh, civilizations up to today. But then big interests, transnational corporations come in and they try to domesticate these people by converting them into citizens, depriving them of their humanity and just making them into citizens uh, uh, and then trying to make them into consumers. But it should be a choice because there's, there's uh, hundreds of thousands of people that have not been touched or tainted by civilization and they are actually the keepers of sacred wisdom so our species can still have a chance to survive on this sad planet. Thank you. I'm sorry, sir, we're going to have to wrap it up because we are already over time. So I would like to, but I'm sure the, the speakers would love to chat with you over the break because I think we are moving through a break now. So please join me in uh, thanking Don Chapman, Marcelo Saavedra Vargas, and Jos uh, Justin Kane. <laughs> Well, we're going to go for a 15-minute
it's a uh, coffee break, um, and then we'll return for our final panel before the closing remarks and the reception. And I'd also like to just add quickly, uh, you can visit uh, Mr. Chaplin's website at www.lostcanadians.com, and he's also selling a limited amount of copies of his book at the back of the room. Um, and again, thank you very much for your presentation. We'll be back in 15 minutes. It's, it's, uh, it's lost Canadian. Singular.